knowing that you'll take care of them, God, those that are homesick tonight, I pray that you touch them in their body, those that are in our prayer box, I pray, God, that you will save, that you would deliver, that you would heal, that you would minister in every situation.
this evening. Let's give as given unto the Lord tonight. We give to Brother Elijah and help support him as he fulfills his calling upon his life. <laughs>
Jesus is trying to move, that's when we got to begin to cry out. Hallelujah. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then he charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt that thou, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Can I tell you, that's what I did. I was blinded by sin and blinded by the devil. But when Jesus gave me my sight, I started following him. Praise the Lord. But if the Lord will anoint and be my help tonight, I want to preach on this thought. Blind prayers. Blind prayers. If you would, can we bow our heads and ask God to continue to bless the remainder of this service. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful for your love. I'm so thankful for your mercy. I'm so thankful for your grace. Lord, I worship you and I praise you. Lord, I just can't get enough love you, Father God. I need less of me and I need more of you, God. It's not about what kind of talent I may have or, or skill that I may possess. Because you and I both know that I can't do this without you. I want you to be uplifted. I want you to work and I want you to move. I want you to receive the glory. I want you to receive the praise. I've been praying and asking you, God, that you will anoint me and speak through me to this congregation and group of people that's in this house tonight. I just thank you tonight, Father. I love you tonight, Lord. And I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us tonight. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, God, we worship you, we praise you, and we mightily adore you in this house in an hour. Lord, we don't want to leave this house the same way. We don't want to leave in the same manner in which we walked in. But when we kneel down at these altars, you would reach down from heaven and touch every heart and every soul and every life. Oh, we worship you tonight, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel like the Lord kind of led me in a different direction as far as what many people would probably preach out of this text. But I've kind of had this thought on my mind for the past couple of days. If the Lord will anoint and be my help, I want to do the best that, that I can to preach in the direction that He showed me. But from history of growing up in church or whatnot and hearing different evangelists and ministers preach and Sunday school teachers teach and other people testify of the story of Bartimaeus, we, we know that he was a man. We know that he was a blind man. Uh, but however, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us how old Bartimaeus was. The Bible doesn't say how long he had been blind or how many years he spent with that uh, blindness or how many years he spent uh, in that spot uh, begging along the highway. The Bible doesn't record how long he had been there. But the Bible just lets us know uh, that there was a blind man uh, who sat along the highway uh, and begged, praise the Lord. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, it was just in a normal routine back in those days, a beggar or a poor man, they was known to the public. They had a garment they wore, and they had a specific spot that they was given to beg back in the Bible days, and they would go to that spot, and they would beg for money or, or a little bit of change or maybe a bite to eat, who knows, of what they begged for. But this one ordinary day turned into an extraordinary day for old blind Bartimaeus. He goes to his spot, 
Uh, he starts his normal daily routine. Uh, however, something different uh, is taking place today. Uh, he begins to hear this commotion uh, that's going on around him. Uh, he, 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 he begins to hear uh, a great number of people. The Bible says uh, that a great number of people uh, followed uh, uh, behind Jesus with his disciples. Uh, he, they, he begins to hear the voices uh, of a great multitude of people. Uh, and the Bible says in reports of the book of Luke, uh, he asked, what's going on? What's this mean? What's the meaning of all this? Uh, and the Bible says that uh, the people begin to tell him it's Jesus. Uh, he discovers that Jesus of Nazareth uh, is passing by. Uh, he discovers that Jesus uh, is walking down the very road uh, that he is sitting on. Uh, Jesus is walking down the very road uh, and is passing by uh, the very spot uh, that he's begging on. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I can only imagine the thought pops in his heart uh, and the thought pops in his mind. Uh, Here is my opportunity. Here is my opportunity uh, to get what I'm in need of. Uh, I know that I'm a blind man. Uh, I know that I'm in a desperate situation. Uh, I know that I stand in need of a touch. Uh, or hoping that somebody will give me back my sight. Uh, now here's my opportunity uh, because Jesus is passing by. I come to proclaim to somebody to so many that'll come and then they'll leave. They'll come. They'll sit through the, through the plans of the church. They'll sit through the routine of church. But that's all they're in for, the routine. Let's hear some singing. Let's take a prayer request. Let me give them a few dollars or my five bucks in the offering. Let the preacher get up and preach. Better not preach over 45 to 50 minutes. But let him preach and I'm getting ready to go home. That's where we miss out. I said that's where we miss out. I'm service because I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to get what I need from the Father. Praise the Lord. Here the thought pops in his heart. Here's my opportunity. Here's my opportunity and I'm not going to allow anything to let it pass me by. Bartimaeus begins to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. When he realized how Jesus is passing by, he cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Then we read where the group of people begin to tell him to hush. They begin to tell him, won't you just hold your peace? Why don't you just quit all that which you're doing, Bartimaeus? Why don't you just hush up? Why don't you just be quiet? The people tried to get him to quit. But blind Bartimaeus just cries out the more a great deal. He cries out more earnestly. He cries out with an even more of a passion. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that very Jesus stood still, stopped him dead in his tracks. God's waiting for somebody to cry out. I can't tell you how many times 
I've cried out to the Lord. I can't tell you how many times I've had to run to my prayer closet and fall on my knees. I can't tell you how many times tears fell from these eyeballs and hit the floor of my bedroom and I cried out to God. But I can't tell you the Lord has heard Now, if I can get to where I'm going with this message. See, the Bible records that he's a blind man. He cannot see. But he can hear. He cannot see. But he can hear. He goes to his spot every day. Just an old blind man. Cannot see. He don't know who all's passing by. He can't tell you all who's with Jesus. Who all's following Jesus? He can't see the faces. He just does not see what's going on. But he can hear. I said he can hear. So he begins to cry out, realizing that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. That Jesus is close by. And now I've got to get a hearing. There's something in my life that I need God to do for me. So he cries out and he starts praying. And all he can hear is be quiet. Listen to it. All he can hear is hush. All he can hear is stop that. All he can hear is be quiet, Barnabas. See, he's praying and he's calling out to God. And he cannot see if his prayer is just making a difference. He cannot notice what if the Lord has to even hurt him or not. He doesn't understand at the beginning. Has my prayers even been heard? All I can hear is the enemy telling me to hush. All I can hear is the devil telling me to be quiet. All I can hear is the devil telling me to get up. It seems like Bartimaeus' prayers has just passed it back off. It's nothing but blind prayers. I don't see if my prayers is making a difference. But what blind Bartimaeus doesn't know is God has heard his prayers. Instead of hearing be quiet, instead of hearing hush, he feels people come by and grab him on the arm. He's calling for you. He's calling for you, Barnabas. Get yourself ready. Put on your shoes. Grab your cane. Jesus has heard your prayers. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in my soul. I come by the priest of somebody tonight. It might seem like you haven't been praying through. Your prayers. God, hallelujah. Father, feel this house tonight. I don't know why he led this. I had planned to preach it last night. But that's not the way I felt God wanted me to go. I felt God give me a different message to preach last night. I'm glad I obeyed. Because the Lord showed up in this house. Hallelujah. I don't know who's in this house that needs this message tonight. But I know to come by to tell somebody tonight, even if it seems like your prayers have got no vision, have got no sight, and you can't see whether your prayers has even been heard by the Lord God Almighty, I'm here to encourage you tonight. You just keep praying. You just keep believing. Because Jesus has heard your prayers and the answers on the way. He's blind, but he can hear. I tell you this, I love those prayers. When you pray, ask your God for this. God hasn't heard your prayers. I beg your pardon, devil. You're going to have to go somewhere. Because the Bible tells me that his ears are open up to my cry. But the Lord has heard my prayers. Glory be to God. I tell you, you've come too late to try and tell me prayer doesn't work. Prayer still works. Hallelujah to God. I said a prayer life is still important. A prayer life is what you need. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There's still power in prayer. 
in prayer. Hallelujah to God. We understand Daniel was a praying man. Daniel was a praying man. Daniel had an extraordinary prayer life. Hallelujah. Evening, morning, and at noon, he prayed. Three times a day, he prayed. But when you read in the book of Daniel, you discover there comes a time where Daniel has himself a little prayer and a little fasting. He has himself a little prayer and a little fasting, but no answer is coming. He's praying and he's fasting, but no answer is coming. Praying and fasting for 21 days. Three more, the Bible says, he mourned for three full weeks. But yet, there was no answer coming from day to day until that 21st day. He began to pray, and all of a sudden, that angel showed up, glory to God, and said, Daniel, I know you've been praying. I know you've been fasting. I just come out and tell you, even though it took me three weeks, 21 days to get here, the Lord heard you from the very first prayer.
those rugged waves by yourself. Praise God. You keep praying. You keep trusting. You keep believing. Because here comes Jesus walking on the water. Walking on top of the waves. I've heard where some people like to say where Jesus was walking, the waves wasn't there. I beg to differ. I believe Jesus was walking on top of the waves. I believe Jesus was walking on top of the waves. But even though the disciples in that boat just were rocking back and forth, thinking this is going to be the end of us, I tell you what, you're not going you're not to be defeated, but you're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. My God, you got the blood of the Lamb, and that is your weapon. You got Jesus, who's never known defeat, and He's right there to see you through. My God, hallelujah. You talk about wondering, does God even know where I'm at? We're supposed to be the chosen ones, the people of God. And yet we're in this place. We're in such oppression, such affliction, such torment. How long do we got to be in this place? Over 400 years wondering, does God even hear our cries? Does God even know, our God, what we're facing? Praise the Lamb of God. But I like it when you read where He spoke to Moses. And you tell Pharaoh, I am that I am that sent you. And you tell him that the great I am said to let my people go. I said deliverance is on his way. Glory be to God. Because Jesus is on that battlefield. And Satan can't cross the bloodline. You just hold up that shield of faith. And cling to the hand of the Almighty. And you'll stay with on the victory side. You're talking about blind prayers. You're talking about blind prayers. They didn't know. There was no sign of help from the tears that they shed. There was no sign of deliverance over the years. If God has even heard my prayer, but I come to the Bible to tell you God is listening and God has heard my prayer. I said God is listening. And God has heard your prayer. And the answer is on the way. The book of Psalms, chapter number 34, verse number 4 says, I saw the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Verse uh, Psalms 34 and 6 said, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Psalms 34 and 15, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and His ears are open unto their cry. Verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to fear. Because Jesus is there. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The book of Psalms, chapter number 18. I could be here all day if I wanted to give you countless scriptures on what the Bible says about the Lord hearing your prayers. Psalms 18 and 6 says in my distress, in my distress, I call upon the Lord and cry unto my God. He heard my voice out of His temple and my cry came before Him even into His ears. Preacher, does God really hear my prayers? I just read to you that He does. Does he know what I'm going through? The Bible says, For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what we're going through. Amen. He knows what you're facing. Call yeah. repeat to the Lamb of God. The Bible says that my voice and my prayers entered into his temple. That means while he's sitting on the throne, he's looking down and he's hearing my prayers. I said he's looking down and he's hearing my prayers. I come out to tell somebody tonight, the line is never busy. If you have a trouble, if you have a trial, pick up that royal telephone, call him up, call him up. There won't be no voicemail. You'll get this is Jesus. How may I help you? Psalms 120, verse number 1, says, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and He heard me. In my distress,
discouraged. In my time of trouble, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. What are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you there is a God who is listening to your prayers. I come to tell you there is a God who hears your prayers. I'm trying to tell you there is a God who sees your hurting heart. And there is a God who has the answers. There is a remedy. There is a cure. There is a healing. There is a deliverance. There is a breakthrough for your soul. Glory be to God. Keep praying and keep trusting. Keep praying and keep trusting. I tell you, there's somebody in this house that knows and believes God still answers prayers. You go back and just have a little talk with Sister Man. She'll, she'll flat out take you still answers prayers. And the evidence is in the house that I'm on. Glory be to God. I heard stories uh, of where there was couples uh, that was trying and trying and trying and praying and believing God for a child. And years and years and years would pass by. Still no sign of a baby. Miscarriage here. Uh, miscarriage there. Uh, but praise God they kept trusting and kept praying uh, and kept believing uh, with no sign of an answer ever coming. Uh, and then one day, uh, I said, and then one day, I said, that's the kind of God I serve. He's still working miracles. There's a miracle in the making. One for you, one for me. Even though it seems like he's four days late, he's still right on time. I said, even though it seems like he's four days late, he's still right on time. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God knows exactly what it is you're facing. God knows exactly what you've been praying and what you've been seeking for. And He has the answer. He's just waiting on you to make a move. He's waiting on you to make a move. He said, Have faith. And doubt not. Have faith and doubt not. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. Glory be to God. Don't just pray and ask a miss. Pray and believe that God will do exactly what it is that you need done in your life. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I know there's some here. I, I told this story. At my church, when I preached not too long ago, I know they're here, but I'm going to tell it again. And you sit through it a second time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I got to, I got to looking up, and I came across this story where a man came up to, there was a man, a preacher by the name of Shamrock. And somebody came up to him and asked him, what is the greatest miracle that you ever saw. What is the greatest miracle that you ever saw? And Brother Shamrock looked at him and asked him, told him the first time, said, You got three hours? He said, I'd like to give you every detail. He said, I just gave him the short and condensed version. He said, I was preaching a meeting in uh, uh, Alabama. I was preaching. It was an all way meeting. It was me and, uh, and another preacher. He was doing the meeting, and uh, he said this, this lady came up, and this lady was all the way from Tennessee. She drove all the way to Alabama to be a part of this meeting. And she come up, and she had a four-year-old boy that was four years of age. And she come up, and she said, this, my, my son, I'm here because I'm going to heal it for my son. This mama's prayer. When this child was born, this child was born with 26 major diseases. 26 major diseases. Its tongue would hang out. Never spoke a word. Its tongue would just hang out. 
was born blind. His arms and his legs was just like caved in on the side like this. It could not walk, could not move. He was born with all these. He wasn't even born with main working organs on the inside. He was just born with all these major diseases. The doctors tried to make the, to convince the woman to give an abortion to abort the child. Said he won't even live three months. But yet there he is at four years of age. Come on, somebody. There he is at four years of age. He's still got those diseases. So she had hopped in that car with her. She rode with another person all the way from Tennessee to Alabama and brought that child to this preacher. And so they gave her a card to fill out a prayer card. And said, we'll give it to the preacher. And he'll call it out and read it out during one of the services. Well, they come time. She was there every night. She was there during the day services. She was there during the night services. Yet the preacher would never read the call. The preacher never got around to the call. The Lord would work or the Lord would move. Or the Lord would have a certain way. And they just, they just never got around to reading the card. And so she'd come up to the end of uh, the last day. It was the last night service. And she'd come up with that child in her arms. And told her the shambok. She said, I've stayed here all week. Paid for my hotel. I paid for me and my son to eat. And all that's left in me is $20. And somehow I've got to get back home to Tennessee. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Shambok said, well, you just stay here for this night service and be with us. He said, if we have to, I'll take the boy myself. We'll take him to the camper and we'll get him to pray for this child. So the service got around. They got to sing him. Brother, Brother Shambuck was leading the singing that night. He led the singing and the preacher got up. He said, I've never heard it done like this before. But the preacher got up and said, we're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to give a, what we call, what I call an offering of faith. So we're going to have an offering, but it's going to be an offering of faith. The puzzle looks come across the house and says, well, we've never heard of that. What do you mean? I want you to give what you can't afford to give. Say, give what you can't afford to give. An offering of faith. And before they can even start playing the little music for the, to, for, for the offering of he said he looked across the, the, the aisle. She was sitting about maybe the fifth or sixth row back. I can't remember exactly what he said. But he looked at that woman who was there every night, who was there every day, who was there crying and weeping in the altars every time. She said, he said he looked and that mama handed that baby over to the, the lady that she rode with. And she come running down to that boy that was holding the offering plate. And she threw in something and ran back to her seat. Brother Shambach said, me being nosy, I jumped off that platform and I looked in that box and there was $20. That's all she had was $20. Brother Shambach with tears in his eyes, he ran and knelt behind the pulpit and fell to his face and said, Lord, I've been trying to preach to this woman and teach her about faith. Would you give me faith like this woman? Would you give me faith like that, Mama? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the, the service got to going. Now it's time for the preacher to get up and preach. He gets about 10 minutes into his message. And he looks up. He closes his eyes. And he says, I see a, I see a white building. He looked across with his eyes still closed. And Brother Shambach said, oh no, we've got one of those preachers. But he said he got to just sit right there and listen I said, man, closed his eyes and said, I see a white building. And I can come to it and I'm inside the building now. And said, there's no doubt within my mind I can hear all the babies cry. I'm in the infirmary, ain't that what it's called? Infirmary? I guess so. And so, uh, where, the, where they hold the children at. And so, uh, somebody, I mean, a nurse, whatever. <laughs> Same difference. Anyway, he got to look at it. He said, I see all these different children, boys and girls, precious babies. He said, and I see a newborn in that, in that place. A 
I'm just going to say place. <laughs> he said, I see this. I can look around. I, I see there's so many doctors around this child, this baby boy. There's about 12 doctors around this child. And he said, I, I see one, two, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. I see 26 diseases on this child. Brother Shamrock said, I stood you to the edge of my seat. I said, we're fixing to have a miracle. Praise the Lord. He said, and I could see this. The doctors didn't give him three months to live. But he's four years old today. He just had a birthday. He said, and I, I could see a cough. And a woman who's loading that car as fast as she can. She rode with another lady here. I see the Tennessee her license tag on that car. I can see the border where they come across. I can see this facility's parking lot. You're in this house tonight. He opened his eyes and said, and God said, if you'll bring that child up right this minute, he's going to give you 26 miracles. And Brother Shadlock looked across that building. He looked to where that woman was sitting there without a doubt. She took that child back from that lady as she come running down to the front as she had in that preacher's arms. She sat along the side over there. She just had her hands, closed her eyes, crying and weeping, praying and seeking the face of God. He said that preacher got to walking back and forth with that baby started praying, started seeking, started praying, started weeping, and he started praying and started crying. And brother and the preacher said, would you just stand with me all across the house? We will pray for this baby. Hallelujah. He said, if you wouldn't mind when everyone closed their eyes. Brother Sandbox said, not me, preacher. I've been waiting all week for this miracle. I'm not closing my eyes. Brother Sandbox said, I was standing back there. And I was just watching as that preacher got to praying. That preacher got to walking. That preacher got to praying. He said, eventually I was doing this number with him. I was just watching and waiting for God to move. He said, all of a sudden, I felt something enter into that place. And I looked, and the first thing I saw was that tongue that was ever hanging out of that baby's mouth. It snapped back like a rubber band back into that baby's mouth. He looked to see what the blind person's eyes just milky white. He said, all of a sudden, he looked as if whirlpools was beginning. And out from those milky white eyes was perfectly precious baby blue eyes, hallelujah, and formed down. He said, all of a sudden, I can see those arms as they were snapping back into place. And those babies' arms was moving, and those babies' heads was moving. And my God, Brother Samuel said, I'm fixing to have a running spell. And my God, he said, he looked, he put that baby down, and that baby was just a walking. I said, that baby was just a walking. Mama didn't even notice it. Mama was just crying. Mama was just a weeping. Mama was just a praising and thanking God. Hallelujah. He looked and seen that baby was a walking. And when that baby looked up, the baby was born blind. It was born deaf. Listen to me. Never heard his mama speak. Never seen what his mama ever looked like. But as soon as he laid that child there, and that boy looked up to that woman that was crying over there on the edge of the stage, he said that baby took off running and leaped into his mama's arms. He said, and I leaned in. He said, the first words I ever heard was, Mama, 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 Mama. Because when Mama prayed and laid him up, she prayed and prayed and prayed. It took me to Tennessee to come all the way to Alabama, but it was worth it. I said, whatever it takes, pray. Whatever it 
Jesus is on. 